What is going on guys? It is your boy Sizzle here, bringing us a Photoshop slash before the tutorial here today. Bringing us a cool little text effect tutorial, and as you can see, it's another Plexus test effect, but this time we're actually going to be doing it in 3D. One of you guys, one of the most, like, I guess, favorite, I guess, I guess most popular as well, because it has, like, 20,000 freaking views, but it, it's a Plexus text effect, but in 2D, and it was done with, like, using only pen tooling, all that cool stuff, and just Photoshop and stuff like that, but I wanted to see what I would can do with it in, like, 3D, so I went ahead and just tried to recreate the same exact tutorial, but doing it in 3D, and it came out with, like, this, and it looks freaking dope in my opinion you cannot lie look at the freaking beautifulness and um so pretty much you're just using admin array and i'll show you guys right now admin array which is located in the array tab admin array and then bully or boil whatever the f i never can figure that out anyway but as you can see if you're like really familiar with like cinema 4d or like photoshop or anything like that uh or cinema 4d really and like you know admin array and stuff you probably think i rendered both of these things out and like two separate things just cut out the pen tool um you can do that you know just like you know feature reference if you guys really want to if that's like familiar to you and you want to still do something like this so the style wise um i didn't do that it was actually used the uh the boiler i was talking about right um what i did which i basically just took uh one plexus and then just like cut out a circle or a uh a square in this case um, and then just basically have it cut out on one other side and just have it just, you know, single rendered out. So it's very simple for me to do that. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that as well. Uh, not a little bit, not even really more complicated. It's just like, I guess, in my opinion, I really like to see the entire, like, you know, project in my head and I have to like render it out and like, you know, put it in post before I can see the actual effect come alive. So I want to do that for you guys. Show you guys all that cool stuff. And as you can see, I'll give you a nice little close up of it. And the camera, right? We have two, uh, we have random spheres here just to give it a little more of a plexus kind of feel. We have a, a cool little polygon with like Adam Ray on it as well. And then plexus spelt out P L E X U S within little uh, Adam Ray stuff here going on here as well. Um, simple, really simple material. Nothing really used crazy. Like, no, like nothing at all really crazy used. It was just use a uh, color, reflection, and then glow. All that simple, very default stuff with the texture being on Fresnel. And then just like fixing your brightness and uh, mixed strength to whatever the heck you guys want. And that's pretty much it. Other than that, you're just going to be using just very simple tools inside some 40 And they'll move it inside of Photoshop. So here we go. Don't forget, guys, 200 likes on the video equals a secret down below. And uh, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and get going. If you want to check the description down below as well, there should be a Lightroom. If there's not a Lightroom, please let me know. I will put the simple little Lightroom down. And most likely, I don't really mind giving you guys the... Um, what do you call it the the cinema 40 file just to just i guess if you want to explore i'll just keep everything you know i'll just lock everything so i don't get to see it right there we go all right sweet so pretty much the uh, font that i actually use if i didn't say it already is planet cosmos with a k um uh oops all right we're gonna put that on middle and then yeah like i said planet cosmos is the font it's a very old font i used to use like freaking forever ago and i, I just felt it felt I just felt like it just worked for this, you know, whatever. Just let it rock, right? So, depth at 100%, uh, 100 centimeters, excuse me. <clears throat> Gonna be, got a trans, you know, freaking from Photoshop, say percentage. Uh, centimeters, all that cool stuff. So, we're gonna rotate it just a little bit on its angle here, like a nice little diagonal, just to make sure you guys can see that it is 3D and it has a nice little depth there. So, that's what I did for over here as well. I wanted to make sure it was still shown at 3D and not really just flat on, you know, I guess faced at a 2D kind of like uh, angle, I guess you'd say. So, here we go. Very simple, just like a nice little simple, very non-dramatic uh, diagonal. We should do this on the right camera. We'll do it here. And yeah, that's fine. All right, so pretty much if you don't use camera, please use camera. Click on this little white box here. Like I want it, when it's white, this is how it's gonna render it out, right? So if I render this out right now, um, it would render it out on this screen showing the diagonal the way we want it. But if I take this off and I wanna move around a little bit like you'll see in a second, uh, just in case you're not really familiar with cameras if i just move around let's say i wanted to stop right here and be like hey i want to look back there in a second but i want to go back to what it looks like from what i'm going to render it from boom that's what camera's all about so yeah just so you guys know ahead of time so first thing we're going to be doing is the cool little uh, adam ray thing where we have both the adam ray and the uh regular text font just shown and then we're going to trans you know i guess like give that cool little transition so pretty much very simple stuff here what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and just use Adam Array, uh, excuse me, Adam Array and then uh, Boil. So right now we're gonna make a duplicate of this MoGraph, Mo Text, a uh, little text here. So Control C, Control V is very simple in uh, Cinema 4D. Uh, no need for Control J. Um, so pretty much I'm gonna take the, the duplicate and I'm gonna go put Adam Array. And I'm gonna go ahead and hold uh, Alt. That way it automatically puts the, uh, the Mo Text inside the Adam Array. You didn't see what I do there. I just basically click, all right, click on the MoGraph. Hold Alt on your keyboard, right? Go to the Atom Array tab or the Array tab, and then go to Atom Array. 
while still holding alt, you click on it, it automatically put it inside the uh, mode text. Otherwise, freaking just click on it and then drag it in if you guys want to as well. Like with the arrows down, drag it in there, there you go. So, for this I'm just going to hide the uh, duplicate really quickly so you can just see the plexus or the, excuse me, the atom array. And we're just going to change our cylinder and radius, uh, cylinder radius to 0.5 and then our sphere radius to like 3. You can experiment with this. I'm just going to leave it like this for now because I believe this is close to the settings that I had. Nothing really crazy. Actually, I'll, I'll make it a little bit less. 2.5. All right, for the cylinders, right? That's fine because I, I really want to have like the cylinders really be the plexus. I, I want to put my own little simple four or five circles within the little plexus for myself. And by the way, just ahead of time, you might see me like jump in the video just because I know Adam Array is very odd in Cinema 4D. Um, I know it needs pre-rendering, so what I mean by that, when I use my boil in a second, which I'll do right now, I'll show you guys what I mean. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to boil really quickly. We're going to have that ready for us to use. We're going to drag our Adam Array inside this boil, or boil, whatever the free... Someone please, like, do that cool little, like, you know, you know what I... You tell me how to say it, because I don't really... I still don't really freaking know. Anyway, what Bulba's going to do is going to cut out one shape from another, or one shape from an effect. In this case, we're going to go ahead and just use a cube, and we're going to take the cube, uh, where are we at our cube and I'm gonna go ahead just really quickly make it a little bit more bigger right to make sure I fit the because uh, I want to cut off where I had the X right where I had it before I'm gonna take this on an angle and we're gonna use this right side of the cube for like I guess the cutout purpose right or where it's gonna end so we're gonna say right about there mm, like right about there is where I kind of want it to end that's good enough for me so pretty much now, and I'm going to throw this cube under the atom array, it's going to cut the cube out of the atom array, or cut the atom array out of the cube, which way should I say it? Basically, it's going to take this, and only this is going to be shown. This, The rest of this X and the right uh, the right side of the X, the U and the S is the only thing that's going to be shown. As you can see now, it looks good, and it looks it takes a little bit a little bit just because it's the atom array. It's a very odd um, effect. It's, it's very hard in Cinema 40, I would say. Um, so yeah, there we go. Now we only have the U and the, uh, uh, the X, U, and the S only showing, and then a little bit over here, for the um, the P, I'm just gonna say I did that on purpose, but I didn't. But if you guys wanna, you don't wanna have anything shown on that side. But I also did a little bit on this side as well, and it, it kind of gave it just a simple little compliment. Um, so I'm gonna keep it like that just for now. So basically now I can take the text. I can show you guys the text again. Right now all you can see with the atom array is on is the right side of the X, the U, and the S. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the boil. Right, we're gonna take another boil, and we're gonna drag the regular text inside the boil, and we're gonna go ahead and take another square. And we're going to try and find it somewhere where we cut it off. It's going to be hard to just like perfectly get it. But I'm just going to like freehand it, I guess. Um, go ahead and make it a little more bigger. Rotate it. And then move it. And I'll say like right there. And let's see what that looks like when we cut it off right there. Um, as you, It's not bad, right? That's pretty good. It's not, it's not as bad as I was thinking it was going to be. But that's a pretty good little guess. I, I don't know. You can kind of see it's cut off wrong. Zooming in with my mouse. Um, it's literally cut off like a centimeter too much. That'll be fine. We have to really get really, really into there, but that's fine enough for me. And to be honest as well, these little um, spheres, maybe just can go down just a little bit more as well. So I'm going to go back to the atom array. Put it on two or so. It's going to take a little bit because of the boil. But um, yeah, just a little bit less. Come on, I know you want to render. God, don't you guys love Adam Ray? If you guys ever worked with it, it's very, very hard on your Cinema 4D, but there we go, it's down. All right, sweet. So pretty much now I've fixed the uh, little part where I had this stuff, right, the little transition here. So what I'm gonna do now is take the little simple little spheres that I have here and just put them on as well. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go back to here. We're gonna go ahead and fix the camera, make sure everything's good, we are good there. So pretty much gonna go to here, little uh, cubes, and we're going to go to the sphere. And we're going to make this pretty freaking small. And this is where we're going to have to get really into it. Like zoom in pretty uh, close into this thing. I'm going to use alt to move my camera around. Just like so. And then I'll make pretty good size uh, spheres. Right? Oops, not space. Uh, we're just going to move it. We're going to hold control to make a duplicate of them. And then move it. And then it makes a duplicate of it. And then we're just going to go ahead and put one up here. Use alt again. I'm going to use arrows. There we go, not bad. We'll have one over here. Uh, let's see where we at here.
All right, there we go. And then I'll just put one over there as well, like up here. Let's see, go ahead and just do that. And this is where like the camera comes in handy because if I ever tried to get back to that same exact angle as I had before, it'd probably be a little bit annoying, but this is good. Um, and we can have, mm, I guess we can have one over there if we really want to, or like, I don't know, like on this side. I don't know, I'm gonna leave the X alone just for now. Let that be like the transition later or something like that. Um, so here we go, there we go. Right, so I'm gonna click back on this little camera here. Now we have like simple little squares going, or circles, excuse me, on like our little plexus here. It doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look very like, you know, random as I want it to look. So I'm probably gonna see what happens if I just move one over there, right? That looks a little bit more random, but not so uniform, you know what I mean? Um, So there, that's fine for me. So pretty much now we already have like the little transition part down and the little spheres down. So I'm gonna do really quickly, show you guys how to do this little, uh, I guess a little atom array box. But they're not really, it's like really like a polygon, like a triangle kind of thing going on here. So actually, I'm going to group all these little spheres together, just in case you guys don't want to keep your 740 messy. It's just clicking on all of them, shift clicking on all of them, then press Alt G on your keyboard, and it brings you into a nice little group. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and go to this little shape tab again, and we're going to go to uh, platonic. There we go. That's what it's called, actually. And we're going to bring an atom array as well. And we're just going to drag that platonic inside the atom array when the arrow is pointing down, just like so. And we're going to go ahead and just change the sphere to, what did I have it at? Point no, we'll, we'll keep this a little bit more thicker. Um, a little bit more thick. There we go. Does that look good? I want this this circle to like kind of show. Like that. That's fine. Also, a cool little thing if you don't know already. Once you click on the platonic, uh, the platonic excuse me. If you want to go to type, and you want to just like kind of scroll down or scroll and like figure out all the different types you want to use. Um, I'm gonna show you guys which one I think I used. All right. Come on. I think I used. I use this one, Octa, right? I'm gonna make it a little more bigger. And I'm gonna go ahead and just, you know, move it up here. Rotate it a little bit. It is an Atom Array, so it's gonna take a little bit. That's just the thing, I, I've always had that kind of trouble with Atom Array, like rendering a Cinema 40 or pre-rendering a Cinema 40. But like once you do it a couple times, um, it just, you know, it's good after a while. So it shouldn't really do it again, right? Yeah, there we go. It doesn't really have to do it again um, until I put like a new one in or something. So for me, We'll do something like, mm. uh, we'll go back on the platonic so we can see it right. Come on. Uh, dude, I freaking, I love working with Adam Ray, but God, this needs to be a thing where it gets fixed. All right, rotate one like that, that's good. And I'm basically gonna make another duplicate of one, so I'm gonna hold control and move it over in just a second. And I'm gonna go ahead and just make another duplicate. I'm gonna make sure I duplicate the entire thing really quickly though. And we're just gonna go ahead and move it over, just like so. And then move it and like kind of rotate it again in like a different way. A little more bigger maybe. You can change the type if you want to as well, but that's not really necessary in my opinion. Um, but if you want to, just if you really, really want to, and if you wanna try out different things, go for it, be my guest. But basically once I'm done with this part, that's pretty much it for the Cinema 4D part. Unless anything else you really want to do for yourself and like, you know, in your own little way. But this is pretty much all I had in my render and it's very, very simple. Now I'm just going to put the little blue on the plexus, which I believe it's this one. No, it's not. It's this one. And I'm going to make sure I have my projection on cubic. And then I'm going to make sure I have my cube, uh, my seamless uh, checked as well. And we go. Right. So this should be our uh, plexus being colored in a second. Right. Out of array. We should be good. And then for like our regular old, um, I guess our text, it's gonna be leaving it white. I'll show you guys the one I had really quickly, just right a second. Let's see. We had one with just simple color and very, uh, like a very, I guess a gray, you would say, and a reflection, no glow or anything like that. That's fine if you guys want to, but your reflection, I already have like a HDRI sky in there. So it just, you gave it a lot of, you know, what it really needed, I guess. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and go here, put that on there. And then as for the glow, actually we'll make sure we put the glow this is my glow blue material. This one doesn't have any glow on, right? So I'm gonna make sure I put this, the non-glow one, on like the regular old, like I guess, uh, spline of the atom array. And then for the balls or the uh, spheres or whatever, we're just gonna put them on the nice little glow material, which they should be in this little group that I made here, right? And then put this on uh, cubic and then click seamless, right? There we go, cubic, seamless, and these should be the spheres inside this group or this null or whatever, right? There we go, sweet. So uh, basically now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put, um, 
what do I want to put? What did I put these these right here? I think I put that in gray. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is just take this little gray material here, and then we're gonna actually group these two atom arrays really quickly with Alt G, and then put this gray material on this one, which are basically like the outside random splines that are just going around just to give it a little more effect. And we'll put the grays on that. And after that, are we good? I think we should be. Um, I don't really think there's anything else after that. All right, this is like super, super annoying at the moment. I freaking love it, but I think it's just because like, I guess I'm recording, I have Photoshop open, all that crazy stuff. So my RAM is just being probably used a lot, but it's going, it's doing its justice. All right, so pretty much after this, I'm pretty sure I'm good. Like, am I good? Um, I think so, right? Yeah, we're looking good. Sweet. So if you ever want to change the color, of course, I'll, I just, you know, if you want to change... Oh, um, what I can do, though, is I can, like, move my uh, my PL, PL and the E a little bit. I think I did that a little bit here. If you can, I don't know if you can tell. I didn't do it really, really that much. But if you ever want to, what I'll also have to do, all I have to do is go to the little boil here. This is our remote text, right? This is our regular old text of the, the Plexus. I can just press C on our keyboard. There we go. And once you press C on our keyboard or uh, right-click, make editable, like right-click... And then, uh, excuse me, right click on the text, but that's not a text anymore, but make editable. It'll be it'll be uh, lit for you guys, but there you go. I can just drop this down, go to the text, and I can find each letter and move them as I please. So I'm just gonna move the P, the L, and the E just a little bit, I guess to give a little more little uh, little taste, I guess, I don't know. Um, and then once you do that, you're pretty much good to render. The render settings that I have will be in the Lightroom, so if you guys wanna get those, go for it. It's not that hard at all though. So let's see here. Uh, yeah, we'll just move like the P, the L, and the E just a little bit, and then we'll just pretty much finalize this stuff. All right. Okay. P, just move it a little bit. The L, move it like a little bit, not too much. All right. And then for the E, just a little bit as well. Just like a little, little, little bit. Like down. There we go. So pretty much now you're good to render it off. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys really quickly. Just in case you want to use, don't want to use my Plexus renders. Uh, Plexus tutorial. Um, when you're rendering it in your own, if you ever get like a message where you're not able to render it, it's because you didn't change the output file, which is this right here. Click on this. You can change it so you can put it in the right spot or on your computer, save it on your computer. So it's not like saved in user sesso because that's not on your computer. Um, and then alpha channel selected. Make sure that's selected. Ambient inclusion, global illumination, and then sharpen filter is all my stuff I have here. So for the, oh, uh, the ambient inclusion, if you want to go ahead and just put 0, 150, 100, 100, 10, 128. And then five contrast and global illumination is one, 100, and one. And pretty much you're good to go after that. As soon as you're done, render it out. And then you're going to go right into Photoshop. And I'll see you guys then. All right, guys. So the render is pretty much all done. I can show you guys here. It didn't take that long at all. Um, I'll just delete these really quickly. Uh, delete that and delete this one. So this is the one I did for the example here that I showed you guys in the beginning of the tutorial. Um, right here, right? It looks really nice and clean. The only difference I think is, is the little cylinders that I did. Um, they both took around, this one took actually a little bit longer. I don't know really why. Um, yeah, I really don't know why. This one took like four, like four and a half minutes. This one didn't take, this one took almost eight minutes. It's, it's whatever. But the only difference that I see is that I did make the spheres a little bit more uh, smaller on the original, right? But in my opinion, I'm not, I don't really hate this just because I feel like it makes sure, uh, like it makes sure that you can see the lighters a little bit better. Because like it just puts all the little uh, curves in the right spots or the, uh, the cylinders or excuse me, the spheres in the right spots just so like you can see the shape a little bit better or the shape of the uh, letter. So it's whatever. That's the only difference that I really pretty much see here. And other than that, we're pretty much all good to go. I put it in Photoshop already. And so, yeah. All right. So if I just show you guys the uh, the original image again, um, nothing really crazy going to be doing. I'm not going to be doing like a background background um, just because I just want to really focus on the text. It's the whole point of the video is a text effect, right? And also, um, yeah, I'm just going to show you how to just do something a little bit like this. Uh, nothing crazy. So pretty much... All, I will start off with like the little cool little still like I guess you call it like filling in the triangles Um, I feel like I've been doing this a little bit for the uh, the plexus just because it I don't know kind of like brings it out just a little bit better So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna figure out like a little bit of um Let's see what do I figure out? I just I want to figure out like shapes right that have like negative space in it. So like I'm gonna pick out this triangle and We're just gonna go ahead and just like follow the outline basically fill it in with white 
right? I'm gonna follow the triangle there. Uh, I can probably fix that a little better, but whatever. Uh, I can follow like another like space like right here. Uh, another triangle right here, right? And then fill this in with white. Oops. Right click fill path with white. Right click delete the path. And then one more, we can do one like right here. You can do as many as you really want, but like I want to keep it like, uh, uh, this is not too far enough. And then right click fill and make it white again. And then, no, that's pretty much it really. Maybe like this one right here. I don't want to do it too much. I like I like the feel of having it not so like not too many of them filled in. Like that's it. That's pretty good right there, right? And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna put this blend mode on from normal to overlay, and then pretty much right there and then you can kind of like feel like more of like a 3D kind of shape like forming in together. Um, maybe if like I fill this one in, but not really because this has like this in the way. I want to fill this one in either because it's really too close to this one. So it's whatever you guys really feel like and how you rotated it. You can find like a lot of different triangles or even like this kind of shape right here, like this right here from going to here there to there and like up here um, if you really want to but that's fine for me this looks good so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and just make a duplicate of the Plexus text tutorial um, font here or the text here I'm gonna rasherize this layer actually before I do that make it a little more bigger right I'm gonna make the duplicated text a little bit more bigger than the original and we're gonna have then rasterize it also we're gonna put the fill all the way down to zero double click on this this way that way when we put like the uh, the fill lowering the fill down to zero is actually putting like the opacity of like the full image down to zero but still able to see layer styles on the layer so with that being said if I put an inner glow on you can't see the uh, the you know you can't see like you know the I guess the font or the uh, text here all you can see is the layer style or the layer mode which would be the inner glow if I just put this to white put the size up a little bit and this is just gonna be a little simple little added effect here and I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like when you put it on overlay. We're gonna rasterize this layer and have to put the blend mode on overlay as well, just so I can make sure you can still see it. But this is what it's gonna look like. It's gonna look like this, right? We're gonna press OK. Right now, all, you, all we really do is put an inner glow on, put it on white, and then just like, you know, put it on overlay. But the only way to erase this without actually erasing it, looking at it really weird, like if I do this really quickly, it kinda looks kinda weird. I don't know, it doesn't look really that bad. Um, I don't know, it just looks kinda like distorted to me. But for what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rasterize the layer. And then I'm going to put this blend mode back on overlay. There we go. And now I feel like it's not going to be so distorted. And I don't know. I don't know if there's really a difference, but I always feel like there is. But this is just what I'm going to do. I'm going to erase it a little bit. And it'll be like a nice little ghost kind of like following around the text. And I'm going to make another duplicate of it. Why not? We're going to put this on like... Let's just change the color of this. Color mode. We'll change it to like blue. And we'll go ahead and then like rasterize a layer. And then we'll just like maybe erase a little bit and make sure this is dragged below the text actually. There we go. Uh, for the blue, I don't know, like just erase a little bit over here. Give it a nice little tint of color. Uh, I don't really like the color over here. I don't really like this whole part over here actually. We'll just erase that, why not? And then pretty much, I don't, I really don't really know what to do like that much if I'm like designing something. I really went off when I designed this. Um, but pretty much I'll just put like a little bit of like a little blue like splots of like color of like brushes Maybe I'll just take a blue from here by holding alt clicking on that and I'll just like take a blue splotch Hit it like three times around the right side. That's where like the plexus is I'm gonna fill I'm gonna fill with the the little blend modes over here like linear dodge add and We'll just like you race around it a little bit to give it a little more color a little more glow around stuff Right, that doesn't look too bad. Uh, what I'll do actually is I'll make another layer and I'll put another different blue though. Like we'll use like a darker set of a blue, like a darker shade like that. That's not bad at all. A little more smaller brush and like a little bit more inside of the uh, little area there. Put it on color dodge maybe. Yes, I'm fine with that. Lower the opacity a little bit. And we'll just like erase around like that. Not too bad. You can start seeing a little bit of a glow coming out of the little effect here. Um, like this is this more of a part is all for you guys. Like I'm just like showing guys what I would kind of like do with the text and overall like it's what's going on here. I probably put a little bit of a brightness and contrast on as well to bring out some of these little you know colors and stuff. Like that. There we go. That looks pretty freaking badass. There we go. There we go. Right, right. A little brightness and contrast making everything look better. Um. So for like if you want to do something like this as well, make it duplicate of the text again. And you can see I'm using the original text because this is the original. Uh, Plexus text tutorial. It says it right here, right? That's what I called it. So I make sure this is that's how I know this original layer. Also, it's still rasterized, the only rasterized layer still. 
because all every time I'm gonna make something different, like right now I'm gonna make this a little more bigger. And we're just gonna rasterize this. And we're also just gonna put this on dissolve as well. And we're gonna lower this dissolve opacity down to maybe about here or so. And to actually trick the system, I've done this plenty of times now, I'm pretty sure you know, but if you make a new layer, well you have the dissolve layer, right? Uh, Cause I wanna change the color. I don't know, can you actually just change the color here? I'm pretty sure you could. So let's just do that. But like this, right? So you don't have to really do the little little trick that I do. Uh, what color blue? Like that, there we go, press okay. All right, so I'm just gonna race around like a little bit over here, a little bit there, a little bit like here. There we go, it's looking pretty good. Also, now I can rasterize the layer though, cause then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new layer, clipping mask this to it, I'm gonna put a white on the left side. So I'm gonna just pen tool out the left side a little bit, fill this in with white, there we go. Now we got white little dots, I guess, like, I don't know, just like little cool little, uh, I guess, how you call it, like particle dots around on the left side, then more blue on the right side. Make it look more cooler. Uh, what else can you do here? You can probably just do, um, I really don't know. I know I did render out something in like another window. If you guys want to do the same thing. I think I rendered out like, let's just see. Let's just take like, let's just go back to this window really quickly. In Cinema 40, like if you guys want to do this, I did this for the, uh, the effect as well. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take the, what do I want to take? Like the, not the circles. I want to take the, like the little polygons. Which one is that one in? I think it's these two right here, right? So I'm just going to delete this. It's only lagging because it's freaking, of course, Adam Array again. We can delete that. Delete that one. And then that one, and then just leave this one. And then pretty much all I'm gonna do really is I'm just gonna control C, bring this into the control here, control V. And basically here, if I just wanted to like kind of separate these a little bit more, I already have like one I already did, so I have to render this out or anything like that. If I wanna like make these a little more smaller, maybe like rotate the camera or the uh, the angle of these a little bit more. Um, what you could do is you could render this out in the same blue material, and then I already have one over here, right? I'll just drag this into Photoshop. Uh, just go over here, put it below everything, drag it into here. So I had like a little render of like these little like little triangles uh, or a little polygon stuff that I had like for the around like the plexus on the right. If you want to do that as well, you can do that and then just like kind of like blur them out just a little bit for like an added background effect, something like that, right? There we go. It looks pretty dope. So I did do that as well. I, I rendered it out basically like these little things on the right hand side without like the text or anything like that. Very simple stuff. I just took a duplicate from like the uh, the original that we did over here. So once you do that, you can render that out as well. Put that in there as if you want to. Um, also, a simple little thing that I did for like a little simple background effect. Like I said, it's not really about the background, but why not just show you guys a little something, something. Um, I just like random zigzags to make like triangles basically. And I'll just connect it. Right click fill pattern with white. I'll just delete the path. Put the fill all the way down to zero. Double click on this, put a stroke on, change the color to white. Take the size, lower that down all the way to one, just like so. Put the blend mode right here on overlay, and then pretty much that's all I did for like the whole background part. And what you can do as well is why not add like a little simple uh, light right on the top, not too heavy of a light. Something like this is pretty good. Lower the opacity down pretty low, put it to like 20 or so. And then like this is where you would start like really designing on your own or whatever, but I'm just gonna put a simple little curve of blue. So like take a curve, right? It's is also found in your little adjustments tab here. Take a curve, put this on blue, and we'll go ahead and just take this left hand side and we'll put this up about like maybe like two notches or so. Right hand side. Let's see. Something like that, right? Maybe like that. Put it on multiply. Let's see what looks good. I think I think light uh, light and color looks good if I just lower the opacity down. Right, and then you got a nice little blue tint around the entire like the entire thing, and then all oh, honestly, if you wanted uh, to do this as well, uh, put like a nice little hue and saturation, like find like another secondary color, uh, like this blue here, like a little of a more baby blue. Um, if I just take and click on the thumbnail of the hue and saturation, take my brush, make sure it's black, and then kind of like erase in here. You can get different uh, colors of hue, like of the blue. I'll just race here, like a little over there. You can kind of see the two different shades of blue, right? Uh, if you want to, if you don't really see them, I can just change to a different color. But, you know, you can see what it looks like, right? 
It's like a little added different color if you want to do that as well. But otherwise, this is basically it. This is how you make a cool little Plexus 3D text effect inside Cine40 and also inside Photoshop to like in post, you know, whatever. But the main effect is also in Cine40, the whole entire point of this video. But I hope you guys really enjoy. Don't forget to leave a like, 200 likes on the video, equals a secret down below. I really do have I really do hope you guys enjoyed though. It's one of my favorite um 2D tutorials that I did really, really good as well. Uh, for like little plexus so this is like the the before and after like this is 3d this is 2d so you can choose your poison to see which one you like the most and also you can probably take some effects from here and like maybe even just like apply some little bit of plexus that you created from sim uh photoshop only and put it inside your sim 4d render if you guys want to do that as well who really knows it's all up to you guys overall i uh, hope you guys enjoy your day don't forget to leave a like like i said before don't forget to follow me on twitter at sysvhq don't forget to share my self by selfie.com slash sysvhq for any premiums and packs those five bucks uh, do please comment down below anything you want to see me do. Thank you guys so much for what? Where were we at? We were at 57, no, 54 point what? Jeez, we're at 54.7. Uh, 54 so, 50, all right, here, I'm going to show you guys. Here we go. We're at that. That's pretty freaking dope. I think we're getting like almost 50 a day so far. What the freaking awesome. I love you guys. Also, thank you guys so much for the birthday wishes. My birthday was on June 7th. I'm now 20 years old. I am an old, old man. <laughs> All right, I started my channel though when I was like maybe what, like 16? Or I started YouTube at like 16. It's been a while, guys. I don't know. I thank you guys so much for staying around, all that cool stuff. Like I said, thank you guys so much for the birthday wishes. It was not like I wasn't going to do anything crazy on my birthday. I, I just went out, all that cool stuff, you know. I'm, I have a surprise for you guys to show you guys really soon about like IRL stuff. Um, only a couple people know. It's not really out there. You probably would never figure it out, so I'll try to figure it out. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Talk to you guys later. Sensor you out. Peace.